Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Where every day is casual Friday. That means Monday is casual Monday. Tuesday, casual Tuesday. Wednesday, casual hump day. Thursday, casual Thurs. That's what we call it. And Friday, casual Shabbat. The Majority Report with Sam Cedar. It is Friday, April 27th, 2018. My name is Sam Cedar. This is the five-time award-winning Majority Report. We are broadcasting live steps from the industrially ravaged Gowanus Canal in the heartland of America, downtown Brooklyn, USA. On the program today, from the Benjamin Dixon Show, Benjamin Dixon, on the week that was and still is. Also on the program, ostensibly to give us a film recommendation, but undoubtedly won't happen. Straight from Sweden. Sweden. Judy Gold will join us. Just hot off a Why Swedish is she yelling. Swedish t- tour. Also on the program today, teachers in Colorado and Arizona on strike. Eh, Not technically in Colorado, but pretty close. Is a national one on deck. And unbelievable footage of the leaders of North and South Korea as they look to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. Meanwhile, uh, Secretary of Defense Mattis defends the Iran deal. We'll see how, uh, if that holds up after Rouhani's. What? Uh, Department of Homeland Security plans a new assault on immigrant families because they haven't done so since earlier in the week. Bill Cosby found guilty of sexual assault. And cussed out the prosecutor. Is that right? That is right. Why does he have to go? Called him an asshole. Why does he have to go? Blue? Yeah, I was like, wait a second. You That's should, the you problem. Should at the very least, have your pants pulled up after you've been convicted why, of sexual assault. Why did he have to go blue? And speaking of which, why did Paul Ryan fire the House chaplain? I'm sure, there was a good reason. And speaking of which, why do we have a House chaplain? Stenny Hoyer caught on tape some uh, wild D Triple C spring break action uh, that we'll be talking about. All this and more on today's uh, program, folks. Um, we also have a magistrate who has been uh, selected to review a material seized from Michael Cohen so that there is no question. You know, because usually the FBI has like a dirty team and a um, and a clean team that uh, that reviews this stuff. But in this instance, uh, they got a magistrate to make sure there was no hanky panky. And of course, uh, Donald Trump uh, and um, and Sean Hannity have basically said, like, we're two we're two supposed clients that he names and we're not clients of his. So it's like, how could there be privileged material there? Smart move, guys. Smooth move, uh, x lax Barely did any work. Back in the Barely day. did any um, work. Wait a second. Also, wait a every second. single I changed my mind. Ever had. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. It's what did I say before? We've done... Okay. I, 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 I didn't mean that. You know, in your president, every conversation you have is attorney-client privilege. <laughs> um, every single with one. With everyone. Um... Folks, audiobooks are a great sidekick for summer. And summer, it now feels like it's actually coming. Uh, the past two days have been spring like in New York City. Audiobooks are great for summer activities like hiking, running, road tripping, going outside, sitting on the deck, <laughs> sitting by the pool, going to the beach. 
trying to ignore your kid. And with the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, Audible lets you fill your summer with more stories. I'll, I'll tell you one that I'm going to, I think this might be the first one that I, um, the first one that I actually like listen to that's not political in ages. Uh, that The one about the Golden State Killer. Did you There's hear about this? Of, I didn't know that there was a book about okay, it. I so saw the headline. Michelle McNamara, right, who was married to Pat Oswald, passed away. She was a writer of crime stories. And she wrote this book, uh, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. And in February, they released the audio book. And um, apparently... Is it, apparently, they have found the Golden State, the the Golden State Killer, who had killed people in the seventies and the eighties. I mean, it's crazy story. Um, crazy. I mean, the story is crazy, and then the story that they found the guy, um, probably as a function of the book, is crazy. Uh, now there's still big questions, et cetera, et cetera, but. Um, no one's quite clear on what put them on to this guy that's the suspect. So I, I don't know. It's intriguing. But that's a book that you can find on Audible. And as an audio, uh, Audible member, you get credit every month for any good audio book, regardless of price. Unused credits roll over to the next month. If you didn't like your audio book, you can exchange it, no questions asked. So it's like, a, it's a, it's like you pay, but it like, becomes like a library. Plus... Unlike a library, the books are yours to keep. You can go back and listen anytime uh, you want, even if you cancel your membership. Better yet, you can switch seamlessly between devices, picking up exactly where you left off, whether it's on your phone, through your car, from a tablet, or at home, or on an Amazon Echo. You can start your 30-day trial, and your first audiobook is free. You go to audible.com slash majority, or... You can text the word majority to 500-500 on your cell phone. That's audible, A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash majority. Or text majority to the, the number 500-500. You can do it with audiobooks. All right. So... Uh, we had mentioned uh, the story that uh, Mattis had come out and basically <laughs> said, well, I mean, contrary to what uh, people are saying, there are um, means in which to assess uh, compliance by the Iranians. Um, he said it's working and it's working great. Or <laughs> so I forget the Kushner. Yeah, one. something something to that effect. And. uh you got to wonder if, I mean, Rouhani, I, I don't know the wisdom of this, frankly, um, particularly well, the time. he's got to keep his own hardliners. Like, there's some question of Iranian self-respect here that's going on. Yes, indeed. And um, Trump is out there with Macron saying, like, I've made my decision, and he knows what it's about. We've had Pillow talk about it. <laughs> But I'm not going to say I could st stay with it. I may not. And Macron, who w was trying to lobby um, Trump to not uh, crash the deal, um, came out and said, maybe there are some problems with it. So maybe they're going to find some solution, it sounds like. But here is Rouhani uh, lashing out at Trump. And man, it's too bad they didn't have him on stage during the Republican debates. On weapons. On Wednesday, Iran's president questioned Trump's ability to even comprehend the terms of any agreement. You don't have any background in politics. You don't have any background in law. You don't have any background on international treaties. How can a tradesman, a merchant, someone who builds towers for a living, make judgments about international affairs? And while he's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could have gone further. You don't even pay your people. <laughs> he just is so amazing. He just <laughs> roasted him perfectly. 
Well, my buildings. I mean, you imagine like if they even let Trump hear that. He's going to lose his mind. I mean, John Bolton takes that transcript and runs into his office, right? Oh, yeah. On the other hand, as with the North Korean case, although he already had his little weird fixation with North Korea, but Trump responds well to negging. That's right. That's so, true. You know, I mean, R- he's R- so strong. Whoa, look at him. I thought he's he was just strong. a hippie with a beard. I don't, I don't like stuff. the dress he wears, but uh, he is pretty, he's pretty tough. He's a tough guy. That was tough stuff. It's tough, really tough. It was tough. He hit me hard. <laughs> and I appreciated that. He really, he really hit me hard. I mean, that's what happens. He's a special guy. Can I, I will take say this. some dandruff off of your turban? I will say this. I mean, on some level, like that's what Macron did too, right? He faced him, Absolutely. and then all of a sudden it's like... And I will say this. So, and I don't want this to come off uh, uh, wrong, but... And John Benjamin will refute this because John Benjamin's a pathological liar. But John's friend, uh, back during our bar mitzvah days, when we were like all 12 or 13... Um, he, his friend was sort of bullying me because I was fat. Now, John would argue that you were the bully and this and that, but John's a liar. <laughs> and so at one um, uh, bar mitzvah, um, this guy, I'm, I'm in the bathroom at the temple, right, taking a leak. The guy comes in, or maybe we agreed to go to the bathroom and fight or whatever it was. And so we fought. We got into like a scuffle. And I didn't punch him in the face, but I got him a couple of times in the, in the gut. And after that, it was like I was his best friend. Right. It was super weird. Right. Super weird. No, I think that that's actually and there could be normal. Armor. So Trump There's could just be like, yeah. he gave it to me hard. I got to respect that. Okay, let's not have, uh, let's not attack Iran. Now, Rohani said, let's meet in the bathroom. He got a couple of gut checks in and now we're friends. That's right. <laughs> And then we went out and had the Oneg uh, Shabbat. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Ben Dixon will be here to look back on this uh, week. We will play some of this footage from uh, North and South Korea. Pretty amazing stuff. Amazing. All right. I'll be right back after this. We are back, Sam Cedar, on the Majority Report, on the phone. It's a pleasure to welcome back to the program Benjamin Dixon, the host of the Benjamin Dixon Show. Uh, ben, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks so much for having me again, Sam. So um, this is a pretty big deal. Um, I mean, you know, we're talking about um, over uh, a half a century here, uh, and... Um, Kim Jong Un, uh, the leader of Un, I should say, of uh, North Korea, and uh, Moon Jae In, the um, uh, elected leader of South Korea. I don't want to imply that uh, Kim Jong Un <laughs> was not Un was not elected, uh, but I think there's some questions about that election, and um, so they. They met at the demilitarized zone. I guess this happened yesterday, right? Or um, right. overnight. Um, and um, 
this is they are basically looking to end the uh, there haven't been active hostilities, but the to end the uh, Korean War, which is basically 65 years after more or less of when the actual fighting ended. Let's play this. I'm going to uh, narrate it because there's no audio, but it really is stunning. Basically, uh, Kim Jong-un and um, his uh, uh, entourage uh, walk to the demilitarized zone. He is the first North Korean leader to step yeah. on South Korean soil. They walk to the, and there's like a, uh, a small wall. Right. Like a six inch mm-hmm. wall that d- denotes the the line. And here they are. They're shaking hands. Uh, and uh, Moon Jae-in uh, shakes, um, you know, with um, uh, Un's hand and they uh, talk. And then he says, step over. He steps over the line. And there's the big deal right there. He's um, in South Korea um, on the in the DMZ uh, on the line. And they take pictures for the North Korean press. And then they turn around, they take pictures for the South Korean press. And there's some audio here, too, right? Just yeah, keep the audio up. And they're taking pictures. And, um, and then Kim has a suggestion. You want to take a step over? And um, Moon Jae-in says, yeah, all right, let's do it. And so they, uh, they walk across, and they're shaking hands in North Korea. Uh, you always wonder what they're saying to each other at that point, right? Like... You're a good guy. I know you're a good guy. I don't know now. I, everything's in. Um, but then uh, um, uh, Kim Jong Un um, walks back into South Korea for the start of talks, ostensibly yeah. to demilitarize, uh, or I should say, denuclearize the peninsula, and then off to the races. Uh, right, Ben. Right. W- what do you think? I, I mean, clearly it's a historic moment. I, I don't think it could be overplayed, uh, and I don't want to understate the significance of it. Uh, the cessation of hostilities, like you said, it, there wasn't a hot war, but the war never technically ended. Uh, this is the first step for them. Uh, the next step is ostensibly to speak with the United States and China to talk about denuclearization, what that actually looks like. But this, the drastic shift in Kim Jong-un's um, uh, policy or approach and tone um, is is it's it's drastic but it seems to be very strategic he he achieved everything that he wanted to achieve in terms of getting a seat at the international table and being able to almost force himself into the international community uh and and so there was no need he actually said as much there was really no need for them to go further because i think he was at a negotiating position that he could get the maximum uh that the, the maximum that he could get without taking us into some type of type of cataclysm and so i think it was a very strategic move on his his part if things actually go the way they look like they're going. And that's always been the big question mark with North Korea. Um, are we actually going to go down the road towards peace? Um, they've promised this in the past. Yeah, I mean, all right. So let's assume for a moment. I mean, there, there's 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 two scenarios, right? One is like uh, Kim Jong-un uh, get, meets with uh, Trump, gets all the photo shoots he needs, uh, and... Um, Nobody really ends up giving anything, and he walks away mm-hmm. from the talks and says, no, nope, not going to do it, and mm-hmm. he's, I've given up nothing, uh, but look, everybody is admitted. I'm a guy you got to meet with, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I've just uh, brandished my bona fides to yep. um, any constituencies in North Korea that may be looking to overthrow me or think that there's certain weaknesses or uh, you know, the general population. The other is that there... They actually say, like, okay, we're going to agree to stop our nuclear weapons program or we're willing to just stop at one uh, Mm -hmm. weapon, let's say, and not develop a system for uh, carrying it. Or maybe we'll give up our weapons uh, in exchange for X, Y and Z. But Mm -hmm. how is this tenable? I mean, like, it's hard for me to imagine the scenario two, um, based upon what we've seen around the world. Now, maybe it's a very different calculation. Uh, Gaddafi gives up his weapons or his pursuit, and then, you know, six yeah. years later, you, yeah. you're you're you know you're you're done. You're in a you know you're you're put into a a, a hole. Um, right. What's to prevent that? Like what? 
wh- where <laughs> is what is the stasis like if they do actually negotiate what is the sort of like stasis look like because it's can't you can't you can't all of a sudden say like oh we're not going to guard our border anymore because right north korea um is doesn't seem like a very pleasant place to live mm-hmm. and if it opens up as a society at all, it's going to get very, very difficult to keep that bottled up. I mean, right. you know, the, 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 one of the things that sort of brought the, the wall down in, in Germany was like, you know. The people. Was concerts, Just, though. Was right. like, holy crap, what's going on? You know, like music. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I mean, I, I remember when I was like 20, I had visited East Germany. They you could go for a tour. And mm-hmm. I remember just coming back, like, all it would take would be, like, you fill up a, a bomber with American toilet paper and drop it on the population, and there'd be a revolution within, like, six months. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, you you have to take in consideration the fact that uh, Kim Jong-un is going to – every step that he's making is to preserve his regime. Uh, there's there's really uh, – people float the idea of unification. There's, there's really no possibility of a, of a, a unified Korea uh, where no, there's no longer a north and south because you have two distinct regimes, uh, and, and that's just not a possibility. Kim Jong-un is doing everything to preserve his regime. And so that's the real question to ask. It's like how does this move strengthen the, the Kim regime? Uh, uh, and if it happens to, to strengthen his regime and the result is peace, then so be it. I mean, I, I think that's a win uh, for the international community. Uh, but but what strategy actually – Where does it? how does this play out? I mean, there's so many different ways that this can go, and, and you're absolutely right. So they're going to clearly have to protect their borders or else they're going to see a mass exodus. Uh, South Korea is going to, to some extent, is going to have to uh, not only recognize but legitimize and support the regime uh, to prevent that from happening. Happening. So we really have to look at South Korea. What type of concessions are they going? To, are they going to give up, and what are they going to do to ensure um, that the regime is not threatened? Because the minute the regime, uh, the Kim regime, is threatened, you can all bets are off. I mean, the the tone will change as quickly as it changed in this instance. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is like, how can Moon Jae In, who he doesn't he doesn't have the same, um, I guess constraints in terms or you know the same depth of determination to maintain his power but how can he go to the south korean people and say okay we have traded with them uh the uh they're getting rid of their nukes and uh but we need to construct a 40-foot wall on the demilitarized Mm -hmm. zone i -hmm. mean right Mm -hmm. like or you know uh we also need to shut down any uh broadcasts or Mm -hmm. we need to uh we're shipping in you know, maybe we ship in food and this and that, but it's all going to be distributed through uh, Kim Jong Un's, you know, uh, uh, you know, a rolling food dispensary. I mean, whatever, like that's what's going to have to happen. And it seems right. to me the South Koreans are going to have to sort of like suck it up and say we're going to have to actually help keep this guy in power. Right. But then there's the other side of it. Right. So you, you have a modernization process. You, I mean, think about the elites from North Korea. The elites would absolutely love the opportunity to modernize North Korea and all the business opportunities that would be created from the South. I mean, there, there are people who will seize on that uh, from a very neoliberal perspective to jump in there and, and to bring uh, industry, whatever they could, to actually uh, modernize North Korea, but also profit off that modernization process. I think the elites are really what are going to are going to drive this uh, and to the extent that it can bolster the regime still i think is the bottom line so at the base of every negotiation how does this protect the kim regime um i you know we just have to see how it plays out but i think there's some opportunities to do this without putting up the 40 foot wall uh without having uh with having an open society and i think they may be going down the path of uh modernizing the north more so than everyone escaping the north mm. and uh so is this uh, do we have Donald Trump to thank for this? If this works, I mean, it's just like his existence as an energy force, um, you know, brings everyone else together. This is like, uh, you know, this is yeah. like me and Bill Crystal sitting on a set uh, at MSNBC and we come together, you know, is yeah. it when it, I mean, is it, it all because of Donald Trump? I mean, is this um, uh, I mean, is that did, does Trump deserve credit? Trump Trump deserves credit in so much as he doesn't 
mess this up. I, I, I don't know what rating the show is. So long as he doesn't mess this up, then then sure, credit him for not messing it up. But you can't uh, you, you can't belittle the the contributions of President Moon Jae-in, uh, the candlelight revolution over the last year, the hundreds of thousands of uh, South Koreans who uh, who protested and led to the uh, impeachment of the right wing government there, and then the subsequent election of a far more liberal government that actually sought to the behest of the United States uh, better relationships with relations with the North. So, I mean, the United States, I mean, Donald Trump literally was making the situation as bad as it possibly could be. Uh, so there, there should be uh, hopefully the people and the good people in Oslo um, have better thinking uh, capacity than some people who are suggesting that Trump deserves the Nobel Prize uh, because there should be no Nobel Prize in this for him. It should, uh, if anyone, go to the Canaanite uh, Revolution and uh, President Moon Jae-in. And, and, and maybe if, if Kim Jong-un actually uh, goes through with this, I mean, it's way too soon to discuss that end of the bargain, but um, he would deserve it before Donald Trump. Yes, but I, this is my plan from the beginning. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I mean, it's going to be fascinating uh, to see what goes forward and to watch uh, Donald Trump. Um, he's already uh, Trump is already now uh, tweeted out, I guess, uh, today. Right. An end yeah. to the uh, Korean War to end. Sam, I'll give him this. He he does know how to turn on a dime, and he knows how to seize on the opportunity of looking good. And in this case, it's the same thing as President Moon Jae-in giving uh, Donald Trump uh, credit. It's because we know that if you stroke Donald Trump's ego, you can get what you want, and he won't you know, push his big red button like he was talking about last year. So I'll give him credit for turning on a dime and being willing to seize on this opportunity because him making this about him is actually beneficial to peace. There you go. Um, Benjamin Dixon praising Donald Trump. Uh, we will clip that and uh, we will do a whole segment. That's on the end it. of my career. We're going to do a whole segment on it on I love YouTube. It. Uh, all right. Let's um, let's turn our attention to uh, some more sort of, I guess, uh, uh, domestic uh, politics. Um, the it's interesting. The Intercept um, ran a piece, I guess. Now, maybe a month or two ago, about how the DCCC was intervening in um, uh, intervening in primary elections and doing so with really no uh, great success, uh, and for candidates who were um, uh, were also were corporatist, and there was another piece. Part of a research by uh, Theta Scoble and uh, Lena Putnam, I think it was, who touched on the same dynamic. They, from their perspective, it was less ideological. It was just establishment people coming in and being uh, jerks to sort of newly um, activated activists in uh, on the ground in in uh, I think it was in Pennsylvania and and then maybe in I think Georgia. Um, but there's audio that has now come out of Steny Hoyer meeting with a Colorado sixth Democratic candidate, uh, Levi T- Tilleman. And uh, Tilleman recorded this. He is the progressive candidate running in Colorado sixth district. He is running against a, I think he's a corporate lawyer. Um, and the. Um, well, here is the tape of of the two of them. It's it's pretty fascinating. Steny Hoyer is basically just explaining. I guess it's some type of bar or some function. Like, mm-hmm. look, dude, we're not gonna we're not <laughs> gonna support you. You got a couple of opportunities here, and this is and and we should keep in mind here. Um, I think. I mean, I don't know. As I let well, let's listen to the tape, and then we'll we'll talk about it. In Colorado's sixth district, one of the most competitive seats in the country the DCCC moved in early to select Jason Crow, a corporate lawyer, as the party candidate, pushing resources, endorsements, and money to Crow while elbowing out progressive Democratic competitors. The Democratic Party often denies that they play favorites. What follows is a meeting between Congressman Steny Hoyer, the number two Democrat in the House, and Levi Tilleman, a progressive running for the nomination for the Colorado seat. 
Now, let me let me just hold on for one second. Uh, just mm-hmm. you remind people about Steny Hoyer. He is the number two uh, Democrat in um, the House, and he he basically built his career. He's in um, uh, he's from Maryland. He gets a huge amount of corporate money. I mean, a huge amount of corporate money. In fact, for years. Uh, I've been talking about a story that somebody basically said um, this is this goes back 10 years at least when he was, I think, the whip. Um, Steny Hoyer, because he gets so much money in his district from corporations, he has the freedom of going around the country and raising Mm -hmm. money for other candidates and for other primary contenders. And this is the way that he built his power. Right. Uh, He's doing personal favors and he's helping the careers and building the political strength of different people around the country. And it was in the context of like how to progressive candidates and how to progressives legislators build their um, uh, their their own base of support. And the problem is, is like they don't take corporate money. So to raise money for themselves is a huge job. And there's just not the hours in the day to go out and raise right. money for these other people. So that gives you a sense of like how Stanley Hoyer became number two. Uh, he and he's and his politics are as odious as they get in the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I want to, obviously I want to talk to you about this congressional race. Absolutely, that's what I expected. Yeah. yeah. So they uh, uh, re- recorded by Tillman, and uh, this is months of pressure from the DCCC. You would like me to get out of the race. Would you keep saying I would like you to get out? And of course, that's that's correct. Yeah. yeah. I know you're fundraising for Crow. Yeah. You know? I'm for Crow. I'm for Crow because the judgment was made very early on. I didn't participate in the decision. So your position is a decision was made, you know, very early on before voters had a say. That's fine because that's the DCCC knows better than the voters of the sixth congressional district, and we should line up behind that candidate. That's certainly the consequence of our decision. There are two things I'd like you to consider. One may be easier than that. The first would be, uh, if you stay in the race, mm-hmm. and frankly, I would hope you would not, I'll get to it. But if you stay in the race, it is not useful to the objective to tear down the growth. Mm-hmm. Pro's clearly the favorite. I'll Pause it. I, I just I, I want to make sure that everybody hears what he's saying. There's basically, uh, Steny Hoyer says to uh, uh, Tillman, there's there's two, there's two scenarios. One is you stay in the race. I hope you don't. But if you do, don't tear Crow down. Good. Win just means he's the favorite. I hear you. That doesn't mean it's right. It just means no. no, I hear you. But I don't know Crow well, but I think he's a decent human being. So before we before we go any further on that, Crow is the favorite. N- in no small part, Congressman Hoyer, because the D Triple C not only put its finger on the scale, but started jumping on the scale very early on. And I'm born and raised a Democrat. I mean, it's undemocratic to have a small elite select someone and then try to rig the primary against the other people running. And that is that is basically what's been happening. I hear you, and I disagree. But you were part of that process Absolutely. as well. You said Absolutely. after. Yes, yeah. I've been at this a long time. Yeah. Uh, when I said you need to get in strong, hard, and early, you just do it. You know, obviously, that's your choice. And you guys are shoveling money at him. I'm going to continue. You're going to continue to do it? We are going to continue to do it. And the reason we buy we're going to do it is because a decision was made to focus, it was clear that was our policy and our hope that we could early on try to come to agreement on a candidate that we thought could win the election, <laughs> and to give that candidate all the help we could give them so that we would have a unified effort going into a general election. Which, which means, effectively, Congressman Hoyer, I'm running a campaign against Crow and against you and against the DCCC because you guys are on Crow's side. Yeah. 
you know, part of that happens in life all the time. So he basically says, uh, we made a decision to get in hard and early. Uh, there was an agreement that Crow was the best candidate to win the general election. And, uh, yeah, we did it. And it, uh, it, it, it comes in, that, that happens in life all the time. Uh, Ben Dixon, your reaction. Uh, first, Stinny Hoyer, uh, Stinny Hoyer is, uh, not the sharpest tool in the kit. Uh, he, he has a history of making really dumb statements, and and I think this is clearly a dumb statement for someone who should be keeping this type of thing. I mean, this is, you don't just go out and tell everybody, or at least at any this candidate that you're that you're fighting against him. Like this is news. He he didn't calculate in his head that this would be news, even if it wasn't recorded, right? Uh, but Stephen Hoyer, remember back in 2006, he had to apologize uh, to Michael Steele, uh, the the black uh, former chairman of the well, he was lieutenant governor of Maryland at the time, uh, for calling him slavish. I remember going to an event with Stephen Hoyer, and he I, it just every other word sounded like something that he was going to have to apologize for later. So to have this guy going around the country is shows you how inept the Democrats actually can be because he's a liability. He has been a liability for a long time. Now, on the on the substance of the issue, I mean, the Democrats, if they had a track record of winning, then maybe you could sit back and say, OK, they know what they're doing, but they don't win. So they don't know what they're doing. So this 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 argument makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, notwithstanding the fact that it's clearly undemocratic, lowercase d. Yeah, I mean, I. Here's the thing that I found a little bit frustrating about this, right? Because, I mean, Tillman is obviously going in and he's trying – I mean, he's he knows what he's doing, right? I mean, he went there with the, with the idea, I'm going to record this conversation. I'm going to release it. I'm going to, um, you know, either use it to expose Steny Hoyer – or use it to my benefit as a last-ditch effort to win the primary, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, to raise uh, money. And here's what I find really frustrating about this, is that instead of uh, focusing on, you know, like, why? Like, get to the reason why they support this guy Crow, um, as opposed to that the process is such. Because let's for a moment just contemplate that um, this is Crow um, meeting at a bar with, you know, Keith Ellison. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Keith Ellison says, look, we've put our support, the DCCC, behind uh, Levi Tillman. We did that early on. And we think you should get out of the race uh, because we want him to win in the general election. Uh, I mean, and the reason why they had put their money behind Tilleman, it was because Tilleman was for Medicare for all and Crow wasn't. I mean, right. where I, I got new. I, I don't think I'd be upset about this. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I right. honestly like I this is what this is what I want. And so you have this sort of obsession with the process and it's not the process that people should have a complaint with. And I don't even think they do. I mean. We never hear people complain about how Martin O'Malley got a raw deal in the primary Mm. because we don't care about Martin O'Malley. We don't (laughs) like his politics, but he was the first one to say that this was rigged. He was the one who who introduced the words rigged by the DNC. That's true. This is true. And so (laughs) this obsession with like the 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 DCCC is, you know, being... um, you know, sort of like unfair. That's not the point. The point is the DCCC is driven by corporate money and Mm -hmm. we want them out. I want the people who are not driven by corporate money in. Right, right, right. No, I I definitely can see that, that perspective. It, 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 to me, if you listen to that, as you, as you listen to that clip, Steny Hoyer can't make the case because it almost seems as though he doesn't even know the candidate he's supporting, right? He's it, it, Unless there's just – I know they had to edit it for time, but there there's absolutely nothing there that he's saying substantive enough to justify his position uh, and, and the Triple C's position. So it seems as though he's just there to bring the bad news but doesn't even know the candidate. Right. And, I, and I think that underscores what you're saying in terms of they can't even make the case as to why outside of the fact that maybe he's just the corporate the corporate pick well i think they probably could make that case but i don't think that that other candidate tillman went in with that agenda i think Mm. he was just trying to go in and say this is unfair as opposed to like you know why are you supporting i mean because you started out by saying like look 
the Democrats keep losing. <laughs> they yeah. have, and, and, and part of the reason why they're, they're losing is because they're supporting crappy candidates who support crappy policies. And uh, okay, so you're saying Tillerman missed a, missed a, a great opportunity to, to get even more I think, than just unfairness. I think this is the problem with the way that a lot of like people who are um, who you and I um, have are simpatico to in terms of their <laughs> politics. Honestly, is they're going at like, you know, I don't I, I have a problem with the process. No, you know what? I don't have a problem with the process. I have a problem with the process because it is uh, producing shitty candidates, uh, you know, uh, full of corporate money. And frankly, it, like I say, if it was Bernie Sanders meeting with uh, Crow and saying, look, get out, get out of the race. You know, mm. uh, I've turned over my email list to uh, to uh, Tilleman and he's going to raise a ton of money and you're going to get uh, better. So don't be a jerk. Get out. I would have no problem with that. That's I mean, I mean, and that's that's true. I, I guess that's fair uh, across the board because I don't think anyone would. I think every Bernie Sup- Sanders supporter would be on Bernie's side in that in, in that equation. So, all right, OK, I can dig it. I mean, I guess, you know, my feeling is just like people need to focus on power instead right. of like the uh, that, you know, politics, because, I mean, everything is corrupt in this way. Everything, everything, you know, like uh you know, that's, I got a buddy who works at the, you know, the box office and he saved me the better ticket. I mean, you know, everything works that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, meanwhile, let's go on to another sort of like uh, a thing that's happening on the left. And um, this this Joy Reid situation. Um, <laughs> and and, and I, I, for a moment, let's put aside the sort of the um the 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 divide as to where she is i mean i think like right. on the i mean i think like it has certainly from a just a pure uh power situation not helped her that she was so active on twitter getting into battles with different people because i think it's it sort of uh but yeah but what do you make of this i mean <sighs> You know, there, there, there's so many different ways to look at this, right? So, I mean, Joy, I, I had I had shitty politics uh, back around, two, I mean, before 2004 or whatever. I, I can't even tell you when I actually started converting in terms of some of my politics, particularly with the LGBTQ community. I, I come from the black church, and so we're, we're notoriously homophobic, right? And so I had to grow out of that. I'm not sure why Joy couldn't just do the mature thing and say, yeah, I did that and it was crappy and I apologize and just leave it at that. So she really it's one of those things where the scandal itself would not have been as bad as them trying to cover it up. Uh, she she literally walked into a brick wall with this one. Uh, in, in terms of like the scale of it, I, I, I have to concur with what you said, right? I think it's been amplified not only by the fact that she tried to deny it, but by her Twitter presence. Like she really gets into scorch earth arguments with people and, 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 and people are going to do what people do, right? You know, you you hit a hornet's nest, you're going to get stung. And so uh, people started the research. They exposed it alone. Like this has been out for a little while on Joy Ann Reed. I, I think it's been maybe four or five months, at, at maybe even six months. I can't remember when I first read it. Uh, but then Glenn Greenwald uh, wrote about it and it just took it to a, a, an entirely new level this week. So, you know, well, my understanding is no, that, that the, my understanding of the of the of the like the TikTok is that it came out four or five months ago. She apologized for what was mm-hmm. sort of, and we should just tell people there were, she had a uh, blog and we're talking about, I guess, 10 years ago or so. Uh, she had a blog where she was writing stuff that was not like, um, I mean, it was definitely homophobic, uh, but it wasn't like, um, you know, God hates fags. It was more right. like, um, you know, using homophobia as some type of leverage to mock people. And, you know, on this program, uh, I used to uh, have a, a closet door every time I would say Lindsey Graham's um, a name. Mm. Uh, and but from my perspective, I was doing that because the at that time, the Republican Party was actively using the demonization of gay people and marriage equality as an electoral tool. And I felt right. like, you know, you should not if you're going to uh, be a part of that party, you don't get a free pass. You know, right. if I uh, if I see you out there, uh, you know, uh, spewing anti-Semitism and I show up at Shoal and you're sitting next to me, I'm going to blow the whistle on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But so uh, so j- she apologized for those things. She said what you said. And then apparently there was a whole nother set 
from the same source that came out at the beginning of the week that Mediate wrote about. And her response to that, and from what I understand, the timeline was that she had contacted the Wayback Machine. She had found these things, or maybe, and, and by the time they had gotten it out, they were already copied. And then it came out, and she clung to this story about being hacked. So that's even worse, right? That's 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 even worse. So I, this is just like more stuff coming out. You know, own it. You know, like you've already gone through this one time. I, I do remember her apologizing the first time, but you know, own it. You wrote it. Just leave it there. But creating this entire see Glenn's entire Glenn Greenwald's entire position is the reason this story is a big deal is because she's trying to claim that uh, this database was hacked, right? And she's using that as a means of trying to get out of the story. And and he continued to push that as a reason why people should care about this story. A big part of me, I, I'm going to admit, a big part of me was like. Why do we care about right. this story? Right. And, and and then he kept pounding. This is why you should care about the story until it took hold. And, and so, you know, all of this could have been avoided if she just had done what she did previously, which was to apologize. Like, I mean, it, listen, John Stewart, I think I mentioned it either on your show or Michael Brooks show. John Stewart read, ran an entire clip talking about uh, with, with a, a transphobic segment. I'll yeah. just leave it at that. Well, I so, remember what it was. I remember this. It's been going around where he was talking about. Um, he, he was mocking Kucinich for saying, and look, I have, uh, my own issues with the Kucinich, but Kucinich, uh, said back, I think this was in, you know, just like 15 years ago, maybe, um, I would have no problem appointing a gay or lesbian or a transgender judge. And John Stewart's, uh, response was like, uh, I can see it now, you know, uh, excuse me, your honor, chick with dick. And, um, the, I mean, the idea that somebody would make that joke and, you know, John Stewart was the hero of the left, of the left, you cannot, I mean, that would just, uh, you'd be, you'd be, he'd be driven off the air, uh, if he did that today and rightfully so. Um, and, uh, it is hard to understand why, and maybe it could just come down to like, she just couldn't even you know i mean i'm sure i did stuff 15 years ago that if someone said to me like you said this and i'd be like that does not sound like me i did not say that sam uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure i laughed at that john stewart segment right so we're all like we, we are all works in progress in terms of uh the bigotry that because i mean the entire the entire nation is moving as a body politic towards becoming less bigoted and then that's a good thing that yep. means that some of us have holdouts some of us have issues that we wrote about back in the day so i mean it's not a huge deal in the sense that if she has grown she's grown but it's just ridiculous that she would take this childish uh approach to it to say that the the system was hacked i mean that's that that's really like the worst thing that you could say because not only is it provable you know they could verify this or but it's also just you know making a mountain out of a molehill when people honestly appreciate growth right they they want to see that you're not the same person t- that you were 20 years ago because pretty much everybody who was polit- politically active 20 years ago apparently except Dennis Kucinich had some some issues with their politics so it's 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 really a, just a crisis of our own making. Yeah, I agree, and um, and maybe we've even spent more time on it than uh, than it warrants. But I think it's just, I mean, it is um, a, a aside from uh, you know my having some disagreements with her in terms of like where where she is on the um, on the left political spectrum. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you know her voice is. Um, I, I just wish on MSNBC she was you know, more positioned in the center because of where everybody else is. But the fact of the matter is on uh, MSNBC, she's one of the few uh, voices of color. And, you know, even she's one of the few <laughs> Democrats left on there, to be quite <laughs> frank. Um, and It's a bad time to be on MSNBC. Tell, tell me you about that. it. Um, and um, But with that said, let's move on to uh, the other big story, uh, Ronnie Jackson. Here, I mean, I think people are well aware that uh, the guy has now pulled his nomination he was accused of of uh, not just handing out Ambien and uh, I can't remember the other one. Someone mocked me the other day for for totally getting the drug wrong. The one that keeps you awake. Uh, but apparently there was other sort of like Percocets involved, yeah. and there was a lot of like a wide range of stuff. And uh, there were uh, car accidents supposedly uh, from drinking. And here's the weird part about this whole story: what 
how did this stuff not come out before? Well, I mean, apparently a, a security clearance isn't enough to expose these type of things publicly. And he did not seek, quote unquote, a higher office or a position. Um, the only reason I could see this coming out would be the fact that Donald Trump wanted to move him to a, a cabinet position without vetting him. So, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of things that go under the radar uh, that that just just to protect the news cycle in some cases. Uh, the incident where he was banging on the woman's uh, uh, hotel room, uh, the, the Secret Service had to get involved because they were afraid he was going to wake up President Obama. Uh, apparently that was not, along with a couple of other incidents, uh, were not reported in a fashion that uh, they created a paper trail. So, you know, I mean... I guess without him don't, going to a higher level, I mean, why don't, would, doesn't I, I the president staffers go like, "Hey, this is a guy we probably don't want hanging around the president right now." Like, we yeah. should get a different guy in here. Yeah, but I mean, I guess you have to say how, how frequent was was. I mean, we really don't know because not a lot of things were documented. Uh, so, I mean, if he was that problematic, then the truth is President Obama does own or at least his team owns some of that because uh, he was there before Trump. So um, but I, I really on this story, I really look at the incompetence of Trump because we can always spin it to be all right. about Trump. Right. I'm about to do my spin job here. This is the incompetence of Trump, because how do you continuously nominate people who are decidedly unqualified for the job, but then you don't even take a moment to pre-vet them before they're vetted formally, right? You, you didn't do the basic research because these are things that are rumors inside of the White House. In other words, he didn't even talk to the White House people about this, right? He didn't talk about to former staff about this. He talked to no one because this would have come out had he just had a, a, just a, a modicum of vetting. But he wears a uniform. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and even the informal, the informal way that he uh, speaks of them, what, uh, they call him uh, Dr. Johnny or, uh, uh, or uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, they call him in such a, a you know, informal kind of uh, presentation or way of referring to him, it kind of lends itself to the fact that this was the cool doctor or this was the right. guy that you can go get candy from. This is what, you know, this is how Donald Trump introduced him to the nation, or at least on that Fox and Friends interview, um, or Randy rather. Uh, so, you know, Donald Trump betrayed himself with this. So, you know, it's it really simply means that Donald Trump is not doing the most basic vetting before he introduced someone to be uh vetted by the uh, the entire nation. And and that I think that speaks to the overconfidence of Donald Trump and, and that's been a trend throughout his entire uh, his entire life. He thinks he still thinks that he's above um, this type of vetting because that's all he had in his private life. I trust my gut. I trust my gut and I just wanted to yep. be more rock and roll in the White House. This is, it's it's his, it's his kind of guy, right? All right well it, let it me ask sense. you this. Okay. And are we not at the posi- at the point now where it's like if you agree to serve in the Trump administration, that is like evidence, primary evidence of your incompetence, right? Like just even agreeing <laughs> to put yourself in this crap show, it, to me, is like the biggest argument that you are unqualified because you clearly yeah. have not been in enough s- scenarios in your life where you yeah. can sense like this is not a place I want to be. Yeah, they're they're really not doing uh, some cost risk analysis here, uh, because if you look at Pompeo, I, I think he's willing to take the risk for the reward that he could get. You know, his ideological reward when exactly. he can influence the well, state. Exactly. He's also Department. a lunatic, and yeah. a uh, and and I would say Pompeo is a is you know does not in any way um, uh, contradict my thesis. He is uh, horrible, and um, that's why he takes this job. But, I mean, if you're, yeah. you know, like a, I don't know, a semi-competent or not driven by, you know, this is the thing. Like, Scott Pruitt, Chris Kobach, yeah. Yeah. Um, all of these guys, they all this- seem to be, uh, lack a fundamental competency in- they lack self awareness, also, yeah. right? If if I had these things that I, like I know there's a threshold of stuff that I've done in my past of whether or not I should run for right. office, right? And you also know there's a threshold of things that are in your past whether or not you should accept a nomination, and it's the same calculus. And apparently, uh, uh, this admiral is not self aware enough to to realize that he should have said no from the beginning. 
He uh, should have been the one to say no. Uh, Benjamin Dixon, before you uh, go, I would mm-hmm. like you to tell us two things that would keep you from assuming a position of public <laughs> office that are in your, your background, your history. Uh, same things that are in everyone else's past. My past is pretty boring. So I, I'll put it like that. But also, you know, uh, you know, hey, that, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you got me stuttering for real here. Uh, but but listen, listen, Sam. You no, got to spend more time with your family. You got to spend more. You got to spend more time. I'm as boring as you, Sam. I'm you, as boring as you. We're you, good. You got to spend more time with your family. That's why you can't do it. You know <laughs> That's what you exactly. In, in 20 years, you're going to see a headline. Dixon is whatever. But anyway. All right. Well, I'll look forward to that. Uh, Benjamin Dixon, uh, people check out uh, Benjamin Dixon show. Um, it's all over the place. You can find it on, uh, via Twitter, on YouTube. Uh, ben, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate hey, thanks it. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend. All right. You too. Uh, all right, folks. We're going to head to... Um, uh, I'm going to uh, call Judy. Uh, listen. Speaking of uh, family, I have an announcement. This is a little bit awkward for me because um, I don't generally, um, I mean, I guess I talk about uh, things in my life uh, on the show, but not, it's not the, this is not uh, WTF. Um, But um, uh, eventually, you know, this stuff comes up and uh, sometimes it's awkward. I don't know. Mostly I found it during like the, um, the commercial reads, like, uh, you know, for Casper, like, I got another Casper mattress. So we have two now. Um, well, uh, the reason why I got another Casper mattress, I mean, just of other things, uh, is, and and I also, you know, longtime listeners of the show, uh, you know, have, um, have been aware of all mile, milestones in my life. And so I want to share it. I don't want to, um, uh, you know, uh, make a big deal of this and, uh, everybody's doing fine. But, uh, uh, I am, uh, separated, uh, from, uh, my wife, uh, my, you know, sort of now former wife. Uh, and, um, uh, this is, uh, a situation that has been, uh, the case really since the, the beginning of the year. Uh, everybody's doing fine. Kids are fine. Uh, we are amicable, uh, Nikki and I, um, and, so uh, I just wanted to get that out there so that if I, you know, start to uh, reference it in some ways, you know, um, uh, someone noticed the other day that I don't have a wedding ring on and went back and saw the tapes where I was wearing a wedding ring. Um, so uh, I just wanted that out there. I don't want it to be a, a topic of conversation so much on this show. I imagine it'll come up at times, but I don't. Uh, but and I. It's not necessary for everybody to to send IMs or call in and say, you know, uh, I'm sorry, this and that. I just wanted to get it out there so that it wasn't something. The, the idea of of talking about stuff that, you know, like, you know, I keep referring to the, the mattress thing. But talking about that and, uh, you know, I, I just don't, it's, it's uncomfortable because I like to be able to just, express uh you know reality as it is and you know uh, i don't necessarily want to share everything in my life but i want to be honest about stuff that i reference to and so that's that but um so with that said uh we're going to take a quick break and uh we'll talk to judy gold and she will give me advice on being single
We are back. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report. Hold on. Do we have a... Oh, my God. You try so hard to do everything right, and everything fucking sucks all the fucking time. I don't know if we accidentally just got into, like, a conversation. We don't have Judy's... uh... Level-headed, Fuck you! calm, cool, and collected. I have a bigger penis than him. Judy Gold is on the line to keep us all connected. The fuck is the matter with him? A steady hand to guide us. <laughs> She'll keep us calm and carry on. No fucking way! <laughs> Too bad Jimmy Reefer Cuck didn't find a worthy of a song. Well, Judy. And he's a, he's such a fucking penis head liar. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I can't tell if we're listening to the song or Judy. That's our, the president of the United States. That's the president. What the fuck? Like this guy, he's... Judy? Oh! I, I, can't, I can't believe it. I can't tell if we're talking to you live or that's the song. First of all... I can't believe I have children. It's just, I just, I procreated. I, I just can't believe it. What? <laughs> wait, when I hear wait. that shit. Oh, like, it just like, uh, that you're allowed to? Or it, what? I don't understand. Yeah, I just, it's like, you know, my mother never spoke like that. It's just, I don't know. I, I feel sorry for my kids. Whatever. I'm honest. How Now, if your mom never spoke like that, how did you, where did you pick pick this up? I don't have any idea. I have no idea. I have no edit button. She used to just say, Judith, you're so hyper. You're so hyper. <laughs> and then she would tell me uh, not to get my blood pressure up. Like, because I used to get so annoyed. When at, you were you know, a kid? Stuff, you know? When you were a kid? Yeah. Anything that was unfair or, yeah, I'd get so pissed off. Judith, what are you going to get your blood pressure up? And then, you know. Anything Jewish, they hate us, they hate us, they all hate us, everyone <laughs> hates us, they all hate us, they they call you a dirty Jew, they hate us, that's, yeah, no, that's how I grew up. Well, that sounds like a, a lot of fun. It was of, fun. A lot it of fun. fun. I can't believe I'm a comedian, yeah. Um, and speaking of being a comedian in very Jewy uh-huh. places, um, you were just uh, back from Stockholm. I was in, <laughs> listen, I was in Stockholm for a Jewish New York festival. Wait, what is uh, that? Yeah, it was amazing. It, it's such a beautiful place. And so Elisa, my girlfriend, uh, was wearing, you know, she wears this little Star of David. We got an Israel Jew, Jew, Jew. And, um, and someone said to her, oh, you're very brave. So that was telling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in Sweden? <laughs> In Sweden. Wait, you're very, uh, you're very brave to wear it. To wear a a little Jewish star around her neck. Yeah. Jeez. It's nice. And so, wait, what is? Will you explain to me what the Jewish New York Festival is in Stockholm? Okay, so they they did a a symposium all day Sunday. It was Adam Gopnik uh, and David Denby from the New Yorker, Jody Rosen, who's a music critic. Um, and just writes about music. Uh, Letty Cotton Pogrebin, who's a you know founder of Ms. Magazine. Annie Pollan, who uh, is a Jewish historian. Uh, the rabbi from the 92nd Street Y, he's the head of the 90s, you know, Peter Rubenstein. I mean, it was Jewy Jew from Jews. I mean, it, it sounds uh, very brave. I, I went to synagogue, I went to services on Friday night, and they checked my passport. We had to bring our passports, and we got questioned. What What did you get questioned about? Do you, why are you, you know, do you, there's so much security. Uh, do you do this, you know, do you sell, you know, do you observe the, you know, the Sabbath when you're in New York and blah, blah, blah. It's just, and we're like, no, no, we're here just to, yeah. But, you know, they have to be really careful. Wow. And because as my mother said, they all hate us. Everyone hates us. They hate us. And so, did you perform stand up there or were you like I on did. a panel? Just talking about being Jewish. Yeah, it was about, you know, the influence. The panel I was on was the influence, you know, of Jews in theater, music, 
and comedy. And then I did do 15 minutes of stand up. I couldn't, I made them laugh. I couldn't believe it. And who, like, who's in the audience? Like people who are just like wanting to, is the idea to sort of like make Judaism he, like, okay. well, it's, there's only 18,000 Jews. Yeah. Make Judaism great again. There's only 18,000 Jews in Sweden. So I, I think it's, there's a small Jewish population. There were 26 people at the services, you know, for synagogue. And it, I just think it's just to not forget, you know, you got to educate people. So, and a lot, you know, over 400 people came. It was amazing. I learned a lot too about, you know, the, immig- it, and a lot of it had to do with immigration, which is not a 15, big issue right now. Yeah. Right. 15,000 mm-hmm. Jews <laughs> in a country of 18, uh, 18,000 Jews in a country of, of, what is it, nine, almost 10 million people, right? Yeah, and 10,000 in Stockholm. 10,000 of the 18,000 are in Stockholm. Wow. That's like the number in, like, that's not not a lot. That's a small population. No, tiny. But, you know, you got to, you have to keep the history alive. And then... Every time there was a siren, you know, the sirens go, we were like, oh, my God, they're coming to get the Jews. So it was fun. What, um, <laughs> my understanding is that the, a, a huge amount of, uh, of, of acts of anti-Semitism, I, I just saw a statistic that said, you know, most of it's, uh, it's right-wing uh, hatred. And I, don't, mm-hmm. I, mean, I imagine that's what's going on in Sweden, too. It's right. Uh, it's right. just uh, fascist. Right. It's in the southern part, they say, most of it. Southern part of Sweden. And did you guys go down there yeah. or no? No, absolutely not. <laughs> and so how we long? We went to museums and ate, and it was amazing. It's how, a beautiful city. How long? How long were you there for? We were there for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, two, five days. Wow. Mm-hmm. That sounds like fun. You know, you just traveling is is key. You travel around the world, you, you learn so much about other cultures, and, you know, it's, it's really interesting. You know, you appreciate America, but you also see the way other people live, and it, it's very informative, I have to say. Um, and we think we're the greatest, we're the greatest, we're the greatest, and yet there's no guns there. There were no guns at all. Hardly anyone smokes. The food is phenomenal. There's no marijuana. That was the one bad thing. There's no pot there at all. Really? Really? Yeah, very illegal. I like there. how synchronized that was. Wow. Like, that's... really, man? Yeah. Whoa, that Sweden's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, forget that. <laughs> yeah. Let's head to Amsterdam. But, yeah. Um, Amsterdam. Now, Amsterdam. did they yeah. have did they have a like a Jewish like um, like talk show host type of uh, figure? They had a yes, they had a moderator for each panel. Um, not all were Jewish. Uh, what? The one I had was an eight. Yes. Why didn't yes, they have? Question? They should be bringing in Jewish moderators, like someone like who's like a host. No, they like did. That. They did. Elon Warshaw, who, who um, did the movie. Who? That's his name. Elon Warshaw. He did a movie called Wagner's Jews. Oh, gosh. About, you know, Wagner, the, um, the composer, and the Jews that he associated with. Anyway, so he was the... Um, but Judy, my point is... He was the moderator. Why not yeah. bring in a Jewish New York talk show host? You know, uh, they're going to do it again next year. I could, uh, you should do it, Sam. That's what I was looking <laughs> for. You see that Judy? ringing endorsement oh, in her voice? Someone she gets sounded a hint. so excited. What do about I it? have to do? I have to go over. And you really want to go, even if there's no that. weed, dude? Uh, I have to. Uh, I have to like hang whitefish off of me and walk over <laughs> and knock on your house. No, I, oh my God! Can I tell you? Every meal they have salmon and herring. I, yeah, I, I, I was in heaven. But, yeah, you would love it. It was really informative. And do you know how they count it when the Jews came over to Ellis Island? I, you know, I just, I'm, every time I say the word Jew, I just know the Twitter, you know, they just write, they just tweet at me. Oh, are you a Jew, 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 Jew? So cut the anti-Semitism today. Anyway. Are you? But do uh, you know how they, they, count, the, they counted the amount of Jews when they came to America on the Lower East Side? 
from Ellis Island because a lot of them didn't belong to synagogues and stuff. So the census of Jews, they counted how many people, how much matzah each family needed, and that's how they counted the census for Are Passover. You serious? What? Yes. That's yes. a joke. Wait, what do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. How, what, wait, wait, wait. What do you okay. mean by that? I don't when understand. When the Jews came... All right, listen, you son of a bitch. When the <laughs> Jews came over in the 1800s from Ellis Island, right? right? Yes, that's where or my family came through. Early 19- yes. Late 1800s. They, a lot, they settled in the lower part of Manhattan. Correct. Now, a bunch of them, you know, they weren't affiliated with a synagogue. And they they wanted to know how the census, how they knew how many Jews were in New ah. York at the time, was how much matzah they had signed up for. They needed to get matzah. They would deliver matzah for Passover. Hmm. Okay, that's yes. It. Trump so, should reinstitute oh, yeah. that. Right. <laughs> yeah. How to keep track. It's the only way. So, get uh, only way yeah. to know. He's so great. How he, many you know, is, Yeah. There you go. Go. I, go. I, I, Oh, wait. What, hold on. One of my other 16 phones is ringing. Hold on. She has multiple phones, ladies and okay, gentlemen. Okay, sorry. This is what happens. That when was you're a Michael Cohen overseas. joke. Get uh, it? It was a Michael Cohen oh, joke. Oh, yeah. Michael uh-huh. Cohen has what? Like uh, 10? 16, uh, 16 phones. 16, 16. I got my cab scam phones. I got my Ukrainian mafia phones. I've got my favors to porn stars that Trump doesn't How know does about How does somebody phones. justify that? Having 16 phones? Yeah. You'd have to go hang out with him on his favorite park bench in Midtown, dude. I mean, don't I mean honestly, oh is God. that not like indicative of uh, a certain practices? I would say. Yeah, <laughs> some of them are blackberries and how do you too. Know? He, mm. You know, oh. he has like he. You know, he has like one of those sticky labels on each one. You know, <laughs> one says David Dennison. You know, it's just, yeah. That's uh, I I I mean I wonder if like I have old phones sitting in my like drawer like i have like a like the you know iphone one i still have that one this is in good this is good for right. the pitch for next year in sweden but that's i keep all you know, my old can, phones you know you never know come, you got to keep your passports and your separate phones because uh, actually you, judy could you do me a favor judy could you tee off yes. on sean hannity please because i think he's the worst person on the planet Oh, he's such a fucking scumbag. What the fuck is wrong with him? Seriously. He's so full of shit, and you know he's not even right-wing. He's just fucking doing it to... I hate him. I fucking hate him. But the foreclosures, too, right? They're just all scum... They're just liars. And, And I can't believe that he calls a fucking radio show, and for a half... You... First of all, they were trying to get him off the show. Did you see that? Oh there? yeah, did you guys? Oh, we play played. We I played that yesterday. Did you play all hosting. of it yesterday? Played about seven minutes to the point where like Kill Me is basically like even Kill Me, who is like borderline not sentient. Like yeah, well, Mr. President, right. maybe you should calm down. Don't let him yeah, get to listen. you. Yeah, Don't we, worry about a, we have another. We have a segment. We have a cooking segment. Uh, get, he's such a fucking idiot. I can't believe that he. Just, I just. I don't understand how he has the fucking time to get up. And, and and sit on a fucking radio show for a half an hour and just spew bullshit. And fucking Hannity's an asshole liar. I, you know, I just, oh my God, how is this continuing on and on? And now this stupid report that's full of shit about the no colluding. I mean, I, I just, I don't, how does this go on and on and on? And in Sweden, by the way, I didn't know if I mentioned I was in Sweden last week. You know, it's, they hate him. I would imagine. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you know do you, do you know this diamond and silk? Do you know who they are? Yes. Mhm. Yes, I do. Mhm. All right. What 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 is the deal with this? I don't understand. Are they uh were they um were they a comedy team or a mm. a, a well, musician a, a, a like minstrel a minstrel show? Music music show? Music team? <laughs> they a band? <laughs> they who they are, are they? Are they I like think DJs? They're sisters. Are they sisters? They're like no. meme vloggers. No, they're they're, yeah, just, they're vloggers. They're, right. Yeah, they're so vloggers. They, okay, so and they go and they sit there and they, you know, they talk about, you know, how much they love Donald Trump and you know, and and the one is always like, mm-hmm, oh, that's right, you know, it's just this. Right. Sort of, sort of like I want to play. She, I, it's I sort of like this. how you are when Judy's on. You're like, mm-hmm. I want to play. That's right, Judy. All right, because we yeah. just apparently back in last summer they did an ad for Paul Nealon, oh. 
who is a white supremacist. Yeah, a, white he is supremacist. a Nazi, a confirmed Nazi, a confirmed <laughs> Nazi. <laughs> yes, and the guy now he's still in. Is he is he running? He's running. He's, he's running. Still he, running. Uh, he's right, Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan's see. dropped out. That's right. So he's going right. to end up, and it's either Neilan or maybe another Republican who are going to go up against probably Randy Bryce, who is uh, the most well known right. Democrat. Uh, but here is the ad that they did for this guy who is an avowed Nazi. Um, right. And it's diamond and silk. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't realize they were vloggers. I didn't, I, I just, I, I wasn't aware of them until like all this like hubbub that they somehow are being censored by Facebook, they claim. Um, yeah. Dave, Rub- Dave Rubin should have them on. I, I wouldn't, I'm shocked he yeah. hasn't. All right, but. Uh, You're pre- retweeted then. Okay, okay, go ahead. Here, here is the ad. Hey, y'all. It's Diamond and Silk. Paul Ryan, a.k.a. Lion Ryan. Cripple the American people and the middle class by shipping our jobs overseas. Jobs like GM, Chrysler, and Oscar Mayer Wing. What? Oscar? What a loser. We want a winner like the businessman Paul Neelam, who worked in manufacturing and earned an MBA. Uh-huh. Neelam puts the American workers first. Huh. Vote for Paul Neelam August yeah. Remember, this is an open primary, so Democrats, you can vote too. Go to paulneelam.com to make a donation. This ad was paid for by volunteers Paul Neelam. So, Sam, the one that holds up the Oscar Mayer wiener goes, mm-hmm, that's yeah. you. That's me? Yeah, right. That's, With Judy, yeah. yes. Judy's, mm-hmm. the, you're, Judy's the the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, you're the hype man. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're the you're the hype man. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't. I, I just don't understand. Like it's, it's just pure money. Only get paid seven grand for that. Yeah, seven thousand. Seven yeah. grand. Yeah. Well, I feel like there's seven I wouldn't grand that do, wasn't there. I otherwise. wouldn't do an Nazi endorsement for less than ten grand. That's what I feel like. Yeah. I feel like they said like that stuff they say about him being a Nazi. The Nazis were in World War Two. What do you think? We're like like the Living Dead or something? And then they're like, fine, seven thousand dollars for thirty seconds. I'll right. Take it. There is that guy, right. who do we speak to, that said, like, uh, I can't remember the story recently where someone was accused of being a neo-Nazi, and they said, I am actually a real Nazi. Right. Uh, not neo. I would like to do the Germany <laughs> style, like 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 the Jews being like, Adolf Hitler. Mm-hmm. Adolf <laughs> Hitler. <America's laughs> mm-hmm. He's going to rebuild the Autobahn. What? Mm-hmm. He, uh... He's creating jobs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, it's so, people are so uninformed and stupid and, oh. Uh, Was it, um, uh- I mean, well, he didn't even mention. All right, go ahead. Go. Well, was it nice to get out of town for five days and miss the oh news cycle? Oh my god! And then not hear about him. I didn't hear about him. That like that was the greatest part. You know, it's not like you turn on the TV and it's like lie, 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 lie. Trump, 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 bullshit. And it's it, it, yeah, it was really good. I went to museums. You got to get away. You have to cleanse yourself. I'm not kidding. It's very important because he is. He can take over your fucking life. You know, uh, d- really? Uh, d- <laughs> did people <laughs> did people like come up to you? Did like uh, Swedes come up to you and just say like, "How can you explain yourself? How can you, how, how, I mean? Can you please and tell no, us like I, what the I deal kinda, is?" Um, I would kind of, you know, you know, order my food and then be like, "I hate him." By the way, you know, it was like, <laughs> "Oh, you would." Can I get those well done? I hate Trump. That was sort of how you you'd preempt you know, it. You preempt it. Right. So like when I'm checking in the hotel and you do a little small talk like, oh, yeah, OK, that sounds great. I hate Trump. You know, you just try to add <laughs> it into every conversation so that everyone knows you fucking hate him. Now, are you so embarrassing? Are you in the like um, uh, New York Jewish Festival, like um, basically like a syndicate or tour now? Like because who's the caboose? I didn't got into a no, Jewish film no. festival, you know, years ago. And then I ended up going to like five Jewish film festivals. Yeah, it's good. Let me tell you something. The cult, the Jews like culture, right? And then once you get in with them, they like to use you for, it's, it's good. And they pay well. Yeah. You got to get me, you got to get, you got to, you got to, you got to say like, Oh, you're probably going to want like a Jewish moderator. Right. I'll, then you got to get me a voiceover on that Bob's Big Burger bullshit, okay? 
I will. I, I, I am shocked that you haven't done one. I'm definitely. Gonna... I know. And I do a lot of voice. I do a lot of voices. Sam. <laughs> Sam, I'm very upset about to this, the marriage, but we'll talk about that another time. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. I know you're upset. But there's a lot of ladies that are going to be running after you. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. I appreciate that. Yes, I just um, want to let you know that. Okay. Judy has now alerted the sisterhood at all the local uh, synagogues. Yes. <laughs> I would imagine. I will, um, huh? I'm going to make a shitter. <laughs> you hadn't what? already done that? You're going to take a what? I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to make a shitter. What is but that? What is that? A shitter. That's, you don't know what a shitter is? It's I when don't. You get Jesus Christ. Up. I didn't know. Did you know that, Michael? No. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay. It sounded like yeah, what I thought it sounded like. It's a shitter. Like. It's when someone fixes you up with another J. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh. I think you'd love it. I mean, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna tell her. Um, listen, what what's gonna happen? <laughs> is I, I don't, I, I can't deal with him and being in office for much longer. I'm not kidding. Uh, I, I just, I, I, it can't be four years. Don't worry about I mean, it, Judy. Thought, just try to set Sam up. It'll be fine. Just relax, Judy. Just relax. Just, <laughs> right. Have another piece of fish <laughs> that you brought back. Go to did you bring Sweden. back? Did you bring back any smoked fish? From Sweden? Ooh. Or, no, or, you like, can't bring anything back. What about like those little Swedish fish, like the candies? Oh, yeah, that's funny. I had the Swedish meatballs there. They're so good. Better than Ikea? And, oh, my God. Beyond. And lingonberry. Do they have the lingonberries at the ones in Ikea? I have no idea. I don't even know what those things are. They're like little, they're like little red berries. So good. Wow. Did you see the I'm telling you the food is so <laughs> fucking good. Yeah, go ahead. Did you see the video of <laughs> the woman from the Port Authority chewing out the cops in Tenafly? Mm mm. Do, do you want to hear this? I feel so weird about this yeah. video. What did she do? What do you feel weird about it? Well, it's just such an unambiguously pro cop video. I mean, this woman is so no, obnoxious. but you know, I'll tell you what's amazing about this video. And I want you to we're going to watch this video right? exactly. Watch this video. Imagine that this woman is Diamond a black woman, or you know. Right. So okay, so right. the video is a dash cam footage of two cops who have pulled oh, over. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to see it again? We're going to play. Over the daughter. Yeah. We're going to play some of it. Yeah. I want to get your insight as someone who grew up probably she, next yes. next door yes. to this lady. Uh, oh what's going God. on? I yeah. mean, but just yeah. for a moment, also imagine that this woman is a uh, um, a black woman, and just like how long it would take until she was tased and uh, oh, cuffed, oh, if oh, not absolutely. actually guns yeah. drawn. But uh, here it is. The the mom shows up. Apparently, she gets the call, and she comes up to the cops. And here's this. Hi, I'm Karen Turner. Hi, it's Nina. No, I'm a resident. Here you go. It's fine. We don't. It's I don't. I don't need that. Okay. Fine. I'm you're, Karen you're Turner. To, you're just here as the ride, right? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm here as a concerned citizen and friend okay. of the mayor, and okay. been in Tenafly for I'll 20 years. Okay. I take full responsibility for them. And what is the reason they were pulled over? The driver has all the information. He'll tell you. No, 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 no. I need to know. No, you don't need to know. Okay. And we're not involved here. You're picking them no, up. No, no, no. I'm involved. Trust okay. me. Well, I'm, I'm very not going involved. to tell you. He's the driver of the automobile. He's over 18. That's all you need to know. Um. Okay. Okay. If you can. We don't need to see credentials. Okay. Here. Okay. We've I, you need already. A, you need it. A... Pause it. All I can remember, Judy, is. Going with my grandmother in, um, in, in Newton, Massachusetts, like 25 years ago, we're driving up to uh, the, uh, they had a takeout window at the bank or whatever. And the first thing my grandmother says to the woman at the bank is, I'm a depositor. <laughs> so this gets you <laughs> special, like, <laughs> like special, like, yeah. And, and like the person at the bank was just like, yeah, no shit. Why else would you be here? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's listen. Here. She, she continues. If you can give me a little bit of space here. I need some privacy. Who is this? Are, Are you a commissioner? commissioner? I am the commissioner. One of the commissioners, and I'm heading up. Do you have an ID for, with that? That is my ID, and that is my business card. I am the commissioner of the Port Authority, and I'm heading up over 4,000 police officers. 
Okay. So, if there's a problem, I think I have... There's no problem. Well, I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, then, oh, then oh things my escalate okay, a little on. bit. And then apparently uh, there was a follow up to this. We're, oh, we're going to skip Wait, over. You we're, didn't even get to the point part where she tells them. How we're we're going to skip to that. We're going to that right now. Here it is. Do that. I think it's the best will, thing at this point. You know what? I'm very disappointed in the way the two of you are acting. You cannot even tell me a mother living in tennis life for 20 years with two kids who went through the school system, what's the problem? And that's shocking. It's shocking that you can't well, even give me a sense. I think no. we should so this conclude piece, this. I will Just for safety absolutely. reasons, this is a high-speed road. I think we should all get off of the road. It's you a little bit dangerous for us being so out here sorry. as long as we were Thank anyway. Thank you for your concern with my safety. Okay. I don't need it. You can't put a sentence together. Sorry. Okay. That's pathetic. Okay. And you are a disappointment. And you are just following him. So you <laughs> are also a disappointment. Okay. You can't put together a sentence of what the are, problem are you is. Now? Pause it. Uh, Judy, I know you've seen this, but do you think that she's picking on the short guy by saying, like, you're just his little sidekick? <laughs> yeah, you know, she's so like a, a school marm. You know, you people... You don't understand. So, You're an idiot. <laughs> I just, you know, it's just, and they're just like, okay, fuck you. I mean, it's seriously. Well, here she goes. She's so, getting frustrated because she yeah. can't. She's like, I'm disappointed in you. And then she turns to the guy, who, yeah. the, the shorter cop, as if like, you know, you're just his sidekick. Well, this is so stupid because yeah, even why if. Why couldn't you grow? Well, she has yeah, no. <laughs> well, she's leaving him like, I mean. Now, even if there was any division between the two of them, like she, now he has absolutely no choice. Right, yeah. right. Here right. That. Here she What's the problem? Are you finished now? Are you finished, ma'am? I'm shocked. I'm shocked and very okay. disappointed. You, you Thank may, you, you may for your take help. Them. You may take them now. You may not tell me when to take my child. You may shut the f- up and not tell me when I may take my kids and her friends okay. who are PhD students from MIT and Yale. Okay. You may. Tell me PhD nothing. students, MIT, me and yeah, I wish they tasted. Yeah. I will be talking to the police, and I will be speaking to the mayor. Badge number five four zero. That's awesome. I got Just to make sure there's I know no discrepancy. There's no dis- Matt is the first no. name. No. And now he's just tooling on her. As long as you got all the information right. I got all your information, okay. sweetheart. You can't put a sentence together. That's shameful. Okay. That's it kind of shameful. is. I don't get that. Have a pleasant uh, weekend. You have a wonderful <laughs> weekend. <Yeah. laughs> Where's this? He, he's speaking perfectly clearly. Well, the sentence I she... I know! I don't know what the fuck she's talking about! She's just saying she and wouldn't tell him like, what the deal oh. was. Right. And what about how she? he's like, okay, all right, that's great. Okay. All right. Terrific. All right. Bye-bye. Some farm to table jersey. <laughs> and then Shade. she shows up apparently at the Tenafly uh, police department. There's a uh, footage of that, but there's no there's no audio. But she's she's there pacing around in the lobby of the Tenafly police department. And uh, uh, obviously, subsequently, she has to resign from the Port Authority. So she is now a former uh, commissioner of the Port Authority. So she's totally obnoxious, and that's great. And her behavior there was despicable and entitled. But, I mean, if we want to, like, underline the contrast, let's remember. I mean, we don't have the video. We don't need to play it. But, I mean, Sandra Bland essentially ended up oh, dying. I, she got arrested for basically arching her eyebrow at a guy for unnecessarily right. pulling her over. Yeah. It's, it's abhor- the, the way African Americans are treated, it is abhorrent and re- it's horrible it's fucking horrible i can't take it it's really it's just it's uh sorry i mean that did you see the story there was a story uh in new york um Actually not uh, somewhere in new york state where uh five uh black women were playing golf and uh mm-hmm. the racist owner of not the owner but like the it sounds like the father-in-law um mm-hmm basically called the cops on them claiming that they were at, they were golfing at too slow a pace even though it turns out that they were not like they they had skipped the second hole because they got chastised after the first hole and then they had to wait on the third hole for the people in front of them and if you've got to wait you're not playing at too slow a pace the people ahead of you maybe 
but not you. And then they called the cops on them. The cops showed and up. And what and happened? Well, the cops showed up and they listened to it and they said, this is not something you call the cops for. So this was the case of cops being like, you people are racist who are wasting our time. It, it was, you know, right. when the cops are the voice of reason in these right. situations at the golf right. club, then you know yeah. you got a problem. He's like, look, I personally have right. six bodies in my own account <laughs> of innocent black people I've killed, sir, but this is ridiculous. To the credit of the owner of the, uh, the golf club, they basically said, we are going to go deep into, um, you know, uh, evaluating what's going on with our club. Dad and isn't allowed here anymore. I think it was really like, <laughs> finally, honestly, you really got the sense of like, like that somebody was like, thank God I'm going to be able to get my father-in-law the fuck away from this club <laughs> for the first time in 25 years. Because now he's really done it. Now he's really what done it. fucking asshole. But just imagine, like, like you know, and this is what is just so devastating about this. Like, just imagine being one of those when we went out to play golf and we get harassed for no fucking reason. You you know, it, the uh, there's no way for you to go through life not assuming that every time you get slighted, it doesn't have something to do with your race. And, and, it, and certainly... Absolutely. Everybody gets slighted to some extent, but you don't have uh, any reason to believe it's other than like, oh, that guy's a jerk, as opposed to right. it's because of my skin color. And uh, well, what about the Starbucks? I mean, what about Starbucks? You know, yep. my son Henry, his best friend is is black, right? He goes to Indiana University when when uh, DeAndre. So Henry will drive to the airport to pick people up, you know. When DeAndre goes to the airport, it takes an extra hour because he can't drive through one of the towns because he's afraid, you know, he's going to get pulled over for doing it. I mean, it's just, it's awful to live like that in the fucking United States of America. And yeah. don't think your fucking president is, is it, ugh, he, ugh. His Sorry. attorney general is specifically saying to police departments, we're not going to investigate this sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Explicitly. Right, right. Literally, the cuffs are, uh, the, the, uh, the shackles are off. Um, all right, let's, let's listen. We got some uh, footage of Rush Limbaugh. Oh, who, please don't let it be oh, footage. Maybe just sound, hopefully. Sound, sound, sound. Oh, Jesus um, Christ. And um, he... It's interesting because um, he is doing a very graphic version of what he thinks the P-tape includes. And it leads me to believe that he thinks it's going to come out so that they can so that he can get out. I mean, this is a classic Rush Limbaugh uh, thing where it's like he knows information. He pretends like he's predicting it. Like I, for right. years, you would say stuff like the Republican Party is going to uh, do this. Believe me, I can tell these things. And, you know, of course, right. the guy's the intellectual pillar of the Republican Party for years. And so I'm sure they had told him. But um, here he is uh, running some flack on the P-tape. Uh, let's listen to Rush Limbaugh now. And she wanted to know. <laughs> Talked about this yesterday. Do you remember when I said to you yesterday, I said, get ready, folks. Somebody is going to produce a tape of prostitutes peeing on a bed. It's going to look like security camera footage from a hotel room. It may be in black and white. And we're going to be told that this may well be it. This may well be the it. This may well be Trump and hire the prostitutes to pee on the bed. That bed right there, that might be the one Obama and Michelle slept in that the prostitutes are peeing on. Well, why, what's to stop them from doing that? They haven't stopped faking and making up. What do you think a steel dossier is? It's fake, made-up evidence. It isn't evidence. It's fake, made-up allegations. And it is the center of all of this. There you go. Does he get graphic into the thing? No, I guess I thought that was graphic. Oh, I think anything involving God. Trump and nudity is graphic. New Yorker article about, um, what's his name, who did the dossier? Steel. Hello? Steel. Hello? Hello, can Can you hear us? Yes. (laughs) I read it. It was a good, it was interesting. Interesting. He's not a liar. He's not a liar, the guy. 
Okay. Well, I think I I mean I think he um you know, he was just compiling a story that he heard. It may or may not be true, but I don't think he was lying. I don't think he had any real no. He said it was 50-50. Yeah. And he has real sources. And he's and right. including by the way from like things that you know, we might be and I am very critical of in terms of like, you know, clients and, you know, certain questionable industries and intelligence work, which you know, whatever, but He's a totally mm-hmm. credible, non-crazy person who absolutely uh, is basing this off of like, you know, sound conjecture, which is like what all intelligence right. work is. Um, you know what I find interesting? I it, find interesting this whole, you know, these diaries that these men keep of like, I just had a conversation with blank and we discussed blank, you know, like. It seems like such an odd thing to do, you know, I, like his notes corroborate this. And it's, do you do that? You know, I don't do that, but I did remember, like, I think this is something that people like this do on a regular basis. I mean, I, um, uh, I remember I was in a position as a student government president, uh, at my university mm. or college. I don't <laughs> want to brag. <laughs> and I was giving, mm-hmm. I was, I had my, my notes and the president of the college was there and he saw my notes and he said, you don't, you don't, you don't write out your speech. And I said, no, I, I have bullet points. And then he, somehow we were talking, he's like, do you, do you keep a journal? And I said, uh, no. And he goes, you should, when you do uh, stuff like this, you should just go back and write it. And even like, you know, when I have conversations, he said specifically to me. legal or when memoir? I have, uh, planning. No, he was just saying like you should just keep a, rec- a record, and I and this is something that 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 people do. I think broad, uh, broadly speaking, I think police officers, prosecutors do this all the time. Yes, they create a paper trail, and and smart people in like corporations also create a paper trail. They'll do it with email now. They will right. send right. an email to everybody. Like, hey, I just met with everybody. Just wanted to let you know. Here's my notes. Yep. Uh, just as a way of, of playing it safe. So it's not, it's just like, you know, uh, people in Hollywood don't, don't do that. In show business, you don't do that. My God, you don't want there to be any evidence whatsoever. Right, right. But it's an interesting thing because it seems like, you know, it seems so antiquated. I'm going to keep a journal and write down my notes. And yet, thank God for these guys that did this. How funny would it be if I guess were- so, but I don't think it's going to lead to anything. That's the thing is that I think this is all well and good with uh, Comey, but I just don't think that it's going to lead to anything materially. I'm not saying that they're not going to find anything. It's just that, like, this is a political process. The Republican Party is not going right. to impeach Donald Trump. Uh, and if the Democrats somehow were to take the House and the Senate, I still think it's mm-hmm. unlikely that we would see impeachment before uh, the 2020 elections. Okay, well, what I don't understand, uh, it just, I, they, they know he's a fucking asshole. Like, they know what a scumbag liar and how destructive he is, and they just don't fucking care. They are, like, too. Like, remember when people went into, like, they'd run for office because they wanted to be public servants? I mean, what the fuck is going on? It's a shit show. It is. Everything you just Welcome said. Welcome to the shit show, yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if, uh, if there, <laughs> you imagine the, the Obama dossier, <laughs> he had like a pee party in Accra on George Bush's bed. <laughs> and then you got a bunch of Ghanaian hookers <laughs> piss on that devil's bed. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Gonna visit the Gulf Co- Gold Coast? Get the fuck out of here, devil. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, Judy, I'm so glad you're back in the country and that you had. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So, so proud. So uh, proud to be. Well, yeah. Um, we should get together and talk about uh, the various Jewish festivals, New York Jewish festivals that we're going to be you. going to. Uh, shidduch. The shidduch. The shidduch. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I can only imagine. You need to, you know, sow your oats. Well, thank you, Judy. That's very sweet. <laughs> oh my God, that was, she just totally yeah. James Earl Jones from Coming to America. You, I love that. I don't even yeah. know what that means, but uh, I appreciate. Never saw Coming to America. Yeah, no worries. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I. Um, yes. Well, thank you, uh, Judy. Um, yes. 
you know. Please uh, get. Please, can you do something to get him? I can't even look at him, and I just I can't. She hates him too. Like she fucking hates his guts. Like he, he's gross. I hate him. All right, that's it. Hang in there. I hate him. I just. I yeah, think maybe I we can send you I out of the country for like a week at a time. For what? Continuing. Let me be it's your spiritual to. practice, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't understand. Like, how does Macron like him? Like, how does he like him? Macron's also a fucking asshole. Well, I think Macron doesn't like him. Yeah, but well. I, I, I mean, putting Macron aside as, as to like, you know, um, what kind of uh, a, a person he is. I, I think that Macron is playing a role and you don't get to be president of any country uh, without being able to to play a game like that, that is totally true. But, dude, he is totally Trump's Blair. Like, I mean, I, oh, I agree. Beyond. I mean, what about how he wiped his dandruff off? It's fucking. Sh- I mean, he needs it to be perfect. <sighs> <laughs> you got to look your best. You got to look your best. And you're great. You're great. That you're is great. A, a you're super disturbing. Did we yeah. pull that? Uh, did we pull that um, sassy Trump? Oh, we should play. It. All right, we'll play this for you, Judy. Yeah. And then you go. You, this, are you familiar with sassy Trump? Move. No, but yeah, no, I'm not actually. Are you don't know sassy Trump is? This will help you. No. Oh, Judy, do yourself a favor. Okay. And it's okay. um, it's it's what's his face um. Peter Serafina. Uh, Peter uh, uh, Serafina. He's a, a British guy. And okay. Google sassy Trump, and then you know you'll come up for air. Probably, I would say in like three or four days, and you're going to feel much better. But this is okay. what what he does. Although he seems to have added one or two lines here. In this, this is one, he took atypical. some liberties. He took a little here, liberties. Yeah. But basically, what he does is just re-records Trump's voice. Um, in a very fey sounding voice, and oh, I love it. Okay. It works perfectly. Uh, are you ready? Uh, here it is. We're gonna. Yeah. He's, he, this is all like a Macron uh, montage. Okay. Say what a great relationship we have. That little piece of hand off. Oh, oh, oh! It'll be. You have to make it perfect. <laughs> he is perfect. <laughs> Emmanuel. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. Is my kiss all right? Totally up to Nick. I like him a lot. Let me give you my face. <laughs> How's my face? Oh my god. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> and it's an honor to call you my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Do you love me? Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Judy, go, go right now. No, that's hilarious. I'm doing that. That's my afternoon delight. Please. Okay. When we get off the phone right now, I want you to Google Sassy Trump. You are okay. going to it. love it. It's going to make you feel so much better. It really is. Thank it's you. like stealing I a pencil from it. work. All right, Judy, always a pleasure. Uh, thanks so always. much for coming on. Always. Love let's, you guys. Let's get some coffee soon. Love you back. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Uh, <laughs> Judy Gold, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Judy Gold. Apparently, she's Jewish. Oh, my God. The one I also have to say, I, <laughs> the one they did with the, uh, he did of the, uh, the Hannity Michael Cohn interview is just. The, the Hannity voice he has. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's just like, Michael, let me ask you. <laughs> and then Michael Cohen, of course, is like, yeah, you know, Sean, it's disrupted my business. <laughs> All right, we have a, a Jimmy Reefer Cake song. Is that not correct, Matt? We do. And the title of that song is? Country is Broken. Country is Broken. I think that sounds accurate to me. The country is broken. And the reason for that is simpler than you might think. And then when you solve that problem, many more problems can be solved, eventually leading to world peace. Country was broken since the prohibition. And Slinger spoke in his lying words. William Hurst stated 
him in the mission. This prohibition has fucked up the world. Yes, prohibition has fucked up the world when it could have been such a much nicer place. <laughs> they like to build walls to keep folks from getting in. They drop their beside on Mexican crops. Brainwash the masses with reefer madness. As slow as molasses, this madness must stop. Yes, it's gonna stop. We're gonna put an end to it, and then good things are gonna happen, man. Good things are gonna happen. Country oh is God. broken. <laughs> this is not a warning. The Trumpy has spoken like a fat turd. <laughs> the idiots listen because they like his story. And neoliberals just bitching and acting absurd. Yes! And then last night, I see North Korea and the friggin' South Koreans, they're out there planting a fucking tree together, man. <laughs> a tree. Well, I don't have my soundboard, but bravo. Bravo. That, of course, is a uh, based on uh, Cat Stevens' Morning Has Broken, which also occurs to me sounds a lot like Puff the Magic Dragon. Hmm. Uh, but uh, there it is, and that is um, a country. The country is broken by Jimmy Reefer. It's a return to form. Uh, return to form, and um, uh, not a moment too late. Uh, there we have it. Folks. Could that have been his 420 song that he sent a week late? Maybe. Yeah, he, he didn't even seem to like even acknowledge 420 whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. just blew right by because that was no more 420 than he usually is. Now, to mm. be fair, mm. I will say this: like. Uh, I know that I was always skeptical of like things like New Year's because I was like, this is amateur hour, right? Like, I don't want to go out like, you know, this is when people don't know what they're doing, go out and get drunk right. and then like, right. you know, end up throwing all over themselves or picking a fight. And maybe for Jimmy Reefer Cake, 420 is just sort uh, of like uh, a cheap commercialization. Yeah, that's normally uh, guys ahead. I, it could be. It could be. Um, All right. Well, folks, just a reminder, this program relies on your membership uh, to uh, continue to produce it uh, every day. You can become a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. And when you do, we give you extra content every day. Some days it's 45 minutes. Other days it's 90 minutes of extra content. Uh, Content that Sometimes maybe you don't want to hear the, uh, the, the free half of the show. I'm just going to skip right to the fun half where they start to uh, make fun of uh, people and things and stuff like that and, uh, and, and whatnot. So Cackle. Uh, cackle. Et cetera. Uh, you can support the show by going to jointhemajorityreport.com. Uh, check it out. And again, if you want the fun half but you do not have the financial means, we will never turn you away. Send us an email at uh, majorityreporters at gmail.com. We will take care of you. You have three days left to order 30% discounted coffee at justcoffee.coop. Don't make the mistake of letting April pass you by. This is an opportunity for you to try a bunch of different coffees. So you buy five or ten, you figure out the two, let's say, that you love the most, and then you get those at a 10% discount for the rest of the year, and you never have a bag of coffee that you're like, hey, didn't, this is, I don't like this roast, or I like it, I found out that I like it from uh, Ethiopia as opposed to uh, Nicaragua, or I like Mexican coffee, or whatever it is. So you only have three days left. It's probably the last time I'm going to be able to mention it, right? Because Monday's... The, the 28th, 29th, one more day on Monday, I guess. Uh, so check it out. Also, uh, TMBS, uh, Corey Pine was in studio. You can uh, listen to the Michael Brooks show on... Uh, H-Bomber guy as well. An H-Bomber guy. For the YouTube audience, they love him. They love him on the YouTube audience. Uh, check him out uh, uh, on the, the YouTube channel at uh, 
youtube.com slash Sam Cedar, uh, or which are majority report channel or on, uh, iTunes. And, uh, as always check out, uh, uh Jamie's podcast, uh, patreon.com slash in antifada and uh quick break head into the fun half six four six two five seven thirty nine twenty.